Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams. Actually, this is a dino head that adorns one of my walls, but in this tutorial, it doesn't matter what kind of footage you have. We're gonna put some lines and points on it in 3D, and this is the most interesting thing in my home. I'm not even the most interesting thing in my own house. So here in After Effects, we've imported our footage, we've put it in a composition, we are ready to go. And before we really get into it, I wanna let you know, in this tutorial, we're gonna use a third-party plugin called Plexus. If you don't have Plexus, you could check out the trial version of that and you'll be able to follow along. But bonus, at the end of the tutorial, I'm gonna talk you through how to do it without Plexus. Ooh, very fancy stuff. And another thing you're gonna need to start us off is your own footage. I've got this uh, terrible handheld footage that I captured around the house and I've already gone through and I have applied the warp stabilize VFX to it. So it's a pretty automatic procedure. I don't think we need to really talk about it too much. If you have shaky footage, apply this to it, you know, use the detailed analysis and get it done and it will stabilize your stuff. If you haven't had to stabilize your stuff, then you're doing better than me. But if you did, you're gonna to wanna to pre-compose this footage. So Command Shift C and pre-compose that. Then you wanna make sure that you're putting all of the attributes and stuff into that comp uh, so that it's not out here in the place we're working. It's all contained. So right now, this is taking the place of good footage and uh, just remember that. But the automation doesn't stop here. The next thing we're gonna automate is using something called the 3D camera tracker. This is used to get a 3D solve of a scene. Anytime you wanna put VFX into a scene, like it belongs there, you're gonna to wanna to do a camera solve or some tracking of some kind. This is good enough for what we're doing. And we're gonna use movie magic to edit to the end of this having solved. After we go into the advance, we ask it to do a detailed analysis and we tell it this is a typical solve. Oh, and look at how quickly that went. It's amazing. So basically what we're doing is we're saying, you know, do more work and we are telling it that this is a typical handheld shot. It's on a tripod pan, it's not a flat scene. So we're giving it as much information as we can to make it easier on us later. Uh, what I'd like to do now is go in here and have a look at these little X's. These X's are points of contrast that the computer thought were gonna be interesting for it to try to base the camera solve off of. And I think it's done a pretty good job. And we're gonna use these to kind of hijack them to make little nulls. So I'm gonna create a null in a camera. So we've, we've made a null at the end of that tooth. And we're gonna go in and we're gonna make a few more. So I'm gonna go maybe to this one and create a null on that. Maybe on this one and create a null there, good. And these are all in the top row of teeth. So I might say, you know, this is top one. This one here is top two. This one here is top three. So I'm labeling these nulls so they're not all like null 25 or whatever. Now I'm gonna go to the bottom row of teeth and see if we can identify some. That's a good one. That's maybe a good one. Maybe that's a good one and take these, give them a different color, and we'll call these bottom. And same thing here, bottom, don't be afraid of using the copy and paste. Awesome, very good. So you've got top teeth, you got bottom teeth. I think what we also need to do is make a new text layer and put some 3D text in here. People are always wanting to put some text into a scene where they got a bunch of lines on stuff. It's not necessary, but people like to do it. So we've got a camera that matches the camera we used. And if we just go ahead and make the dino text 3D, notice it moves, right? Goes from over here to over here. Interesting, why? Well, it starts off in its position right here at 960 whatever. And if we call up our camera, its position starts there too. That's just a default thing. But if we're over here in the timeline and we turn this thing to 3D, it jumps out of the way because it's in 3D space over here. The camera has moved away from it. So just try to be aware of those things that when you make text 3D by default, it might not be where you want it to be, just a problem that comes up. So you might wanna just move this to be, you know, more in line with where you want it. Ooh, not, like, not like there, maybe like here. 
Mm, push it back. Yeah, that seems to be correct. It seems to be in the mouth. That looks close enough for me. And what I'm going to do is now add some null objects on the dino text here. So I'm going to just go new null object, make it 3D. And you'll notice it's jumped over there. I'm going to hold down shift and parent it to the dino. All right, to the, well, the word dino. And then I'm going to move it. Beep, 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 beep. Boop, 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 boop. Move it in 3D to be on that eye. And how about I duplicate it again and uh, boop, 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 move it to the end of the N. And, you know, one more, duplicate it and move it to the top of the N. Sure, why not? Who really cares? Or maybe to the top of the O? I don't know. Somewhere. Put them somewhere. And these nulls should be called uh, text. So we can remember that they are on the text. Great. So I think we've got everything set up. At this point, if you have Plexus or not, these steps are all the same. But if you do have Plexus, it's really easy to finish. This is, this is the end game right here. We're going to create a new solid layer. It's a black solid, great. And we're going to add to it Plexus. So I'll go to the effects here, Plexus. And what Plexus does and is, if you've never used it before, or maybe you're just unfamiliar with it, Plexus is a very advanced uh, particle system. It allows you to add geometry and then link the points and vertices of that geometry together in very interesting ways. So you could even bring in sort of 3D objects, objet, uh, from things. But we're going to add layers, layers that are in After Effects already. And the layer type we want are 3D layers, and we want nulls. We want those nulls. And we want nulls that begin with the word bottom for one of them, and that's going to be group one. And we don't want it to get the colors from the layers. We do want it to have 100% opacity. Big thumbs up for that. But I'm just going to duplicate that to make layers object two, which will form group two, and the name is top. So it's searching for all the nulls that start with top and assigning those uh, a coordinate space in Plexus. And duplicate that one more time to make group three, which are the text nulls. Okay, so that's good. We got some geometry in there. We can't really see it yet though. I mean, are you seeing it? I don't see anything there. That's, I don't think that's working out. Something is not happening for us. And it could be a lot of things that are not happening, but one of the things I think is that the point size is too small. So you might need to increase your point size to actually see the points. And that is because our coordinate system is a little bit messed up. Uh, these nulls are very far apart in space, or they can be, they could be for you, and that might be a reason you're not seeing the little dots. So that's just a heads up that that might be the case. Um, so we've got dots. Dots are great, but dots aren't lines, all right? The client specifically said lines on things, not dots on things. So get your head out of your keister and add a new renderer that is lines. And these lines, it only draws them within a certain distance. So what is the maximum distance between two points at which it will create a line? Well, let's start increasing that more, 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 more and it starts to draw the spider web of points as it's connecting them all together in this wacky network. So as you can see, that looks pretty legit. You know, we can, we're can moving through it in 3D, everything's moving as expected. One thing that isn't really expected, just fill that opacity over distance, is that they're all connecting to everything else. We want a little control over that, and that's why we made these groups. So right now, we are drawing lines between every group, meaning every point that is, you know, draw some lines. But if we said only draw between things of the same group, we'll see what happens. All of these draw between themselves, these draw, these draw, that's okay. What if we said only draw between different groups? That means that this will draw to points that are not its own group. That could be fun. And what we could do is kind of reduce the distance to kind of make, oh yeah, that's a cool look, kind of like that. And you could reduce the number of vertices that it searches out, 
kind of like this. You get it with this kind of look. That's pretty cool. Maybe we start increasing this a little bit. There we go. Now I think we're on to something. And that allows you to just kind of fine tune what's going on. But that's pretty much it. I think we got it locked down. Maybe increase the thickness of the lines a little bit so they're a little bit more noticeable out there. But I think this is looking pretty cool. It's a pretty good look. And when you render this out, it'll look wonderful. Now I will say that Plexus can be a little hardware intensive. So, you know, just keep that in mind. But as promised, we will do this without Plexus. So let's not even look at it. Let's make a new solid, a totally different solid. But what effect will we use? There must be an effect to accomplish this. Well, there is. And you've probably guessed it is the beam. Look at that. Doesn't that look exactly the same? We nailed it. No work required on this one. Uh, actually, a lot of work required. First thing, no softness, thanks. I don't want that. And uh, change the color here to, uh, to nice bright white. Cool. Make it thinner. Thin, thin, thin. Thin is in. And make the length 100%. So that's 100% of the way between these two points. Now all we have to do is make the start point and end point uh, line up with the things we want to connect. Right? Pretty easy. So hold down Alt and click on these stopwatches and let's enter expressions that will accomplish this. That's right, the solution to an easy uh, easy plugin is to use a complicated expression, and it's not very complicated. What we're trying to do is solve the problem of linking a two-dimensional thing, this, you know, array of type 2, x comma y, to a 3D dimension. So if I wanted to link it to this text, for example, its position is expressed as three numbers in the world, but I need it to be expressed as two numbers relative to the composition. And there is an expression that does exactly that. So what are we gonna type to accomplish that? Well, we're gonna first say L equals, and the L needs to equal a layer, right? And we're setting up a variable just to make it easier to write the rest of this thing. Once we've identified the layer we're interested, then we say, that layer dot to comp and then in brackets and then in square brackets inside those brackets zero comma zero comma zero so what we're saying is look at that layer and then take its coordinates and make them conform to the composition and as you can see the starting point has now moved to right there it has worked Perfectly. Now you might use this beam if you want to say have the start point and end point, like one of them on a 3D thing and one of them on a 2D thing. That's fine. But you know, we can do this and a this and now have this link to, I don't know, top two. There we go. Nailed it. And now these two things are linked together in a very similar way that you saw with Plexus. Now maybe you want uh, the starting thickness to be, you know, smaller than the ending thickness. Oh yeah, got that going on. We are faking it till we make it out here. And now we've accomplished pretty much the same thing, but with the beam. If you want to then start connecting more things though, you'll have to duplicate the beam, duplicate, and then go in here, go into that beam and, and change it from say, not top two, but top one or something like that. And then you'll have to have them composite on top of each other in a nice way to make that happen. but. If you choose to go the beam route, just know that you have a little bit more work ahead of you. If you enjoy the Plexus route, then you are already done and you stopped watching a long time ago. But this has been Evan Abrams. I hope you enjoyed putting lines on things. I've enjoyed talking about it. If you have any questions about what we did, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to talk you through it. Uh, that two comp thing can be a little bit confusing. If you've enjoyed uh, hearing about VFX, motion graphics, if you like this thing, subscribe to this channel. I try to put up new stuff uh, on a weekly basis, so subscribe to get your mitts on that. And if you want to ask questions about After Effects, motion graphics in general, hit me up on Twitter, at EC Abrams, or on the Facebook page, links to all that stuff in the description. If you want to get your hands on the work file that we just made, then head over to evanabrams.com, links to that in the cards. I don't really know how cards work. But that's really it. If you enjoyed this channel, please subscribe to it and get updates. And if you do, I'll see you next time.